and welcome here to the National Cricket Stadium, of course in Grenada, St George's Grenada, uh, where we are on the final day, the final day of uh, the Dream Eleven Spy Style Tin Tin Cricket. We've had uh, 10 days of glorious cricket and we're right down to the wire now and we should let you know that the third place playoff will be between Ginger Generals and Saffron Strikers. Ginger Generals and Sa Saffron Strikers and that match is going to start in just a few minutes. A little later on of course we're going to give up give you the lineup of both teams but let's as usual go to Kerry Frank he's with the two captains. Welcome to the toss for the third place playoff in the Dream 11 Spy Style T10 tournament. We have here with us at the toss party the match referee, Mr. Carl Felix, our two captains for this match, Ryan John and Roland Kato, and the third umpire for this match, Rupert Hulas. Mr. Match referee, it's over to you. The call is ahead, and it is ahead. Roland Kato has won his final toss in the tournament. Um, Kato, uh, first of all, I'm sure you guys must be a bit disappointed to be playing here this morning and not in the big showcase later on today. Yeah, most definitely. Um, you guys are very disappointed after yesterday. Um, we didn't bat good enough, but at the end, I think they needed 39 in two overs and any day I will back my bowlers to defend that, but unfortunately, we did not. All right. Um, before we get into your decision for this toss, um, your guys' thoughts overall on your, your um, appreciation for this tournament, what it's like? Um, the tournament is a wonderful tournament. All the guys are pretty pumped and excited. They all want and when will be the next one, so that's good signs. So it's just all about coming back next year whenever it's the next tournament and doing better than how we did. All right, winning the toss. Um, what's your decision of the Ginger Generals? Um, we're gonna have a field for today. All right. Um, um, any particular um thinking behind that decision? No. Nah, um, they, it's first game. The wicket has been covered on, so probably might have a little one or two in it for the um, Pacers, so we just want to utilise it. Yes. Coming up against your good friend Ryan John, looking to get one over him as you, both of you will exit the tournament? Yeah, most definitely. That is how we can play for now with Studs, so we just come and come out here today and bat the hard and be the best team win, who play the best cricket win. All right, well, Roland, congratulations to you guys and all the best at today's match. All right, thank you. Ryan, um, losing the toss, I'm sure you'd have wanted to have won the final toss against your good friend Roland Kito. Yeah, definitely, but it's, that's just how the game goes. I mean, whatever, we, I think we have been asked to bat, so I'm um, just going out there, play positive cricket. I mean, there's a lot to play for. There's another tournament, hopefully, in the making, so it's just for guys to get drafted, to put in a last performance in for the, like, the final match of the tournament. Um, your guys' overall thoughts on the tournament, as we know, on the final day? Um, I really think that it played with good sportsmanship, I must say. Um, the quality was excellent, good from the, the Dream 11. Thanks for the, the opportunity and our um, National Cricket Association. We have to say thanks very much for the opportunity. All right, batting first on what has promised to be a wicket. We've seen through the tournament, it offers a little bit more assistance to the seamers. This one we're playing on, and um, um, also the ball will come on a bit better. So, with that said, what do you think will be a good total you guys can defend later on? I would say cricket is what would always be cricket. Um, it's just that you, as a batsman, go out and apply yourself, be positive, you pounce on whatever bad ball, and you try to minimize the dot balls. And I think if we get to 100 and 20 would be good enough for our bowlers today. As I asked Kito coming up against your good buddy Kito, two of you all from the same, represent the same parish at the national level. Looking forward to get one of him as you both exit the tournament? Yes, most definitely. We always battle whenever we play against each other, even in the nets practicing. So it, it would be good to finish on a high against him as well. All right, well, Ryan, we certainly want to thank Safran uh, Strikers for the entertainment they provided, and we wish you guys all the best for this final match. All right, thank you very much. All right, so to recap the news from the middle, Ginger Generals have won the toss and they've inserted Safran Strikers into bat. Kerry Frank just declared that Ginger Generals, they've won the toss and they've decided to field. This is the third place playoff, third place playoff between the Ginger Generals and the Saffron Strikers. So let's look at the lineup that we've got here, the Saffron Strikers lineup. We just heard from Ryan John, who is the captain. So it's John, Kem Charles, Kendall George, Mikel Joseph. Lyndon Lawrence, Sherman Lewis, Alex Moses, 
Jensen Phillip, Nicosi Sintile, Laurie Williams, and Jelani George. That's the Saffron Strikers lineup for match number 34 in the Dream 11 Spice Isle 1010 tournament. Ginger Generals, of course, who won the toss and uh, decided to field, they're spearheaded there by Roland Cato, Sean Andrew, Wavell Benjamin, Renald Charles, Larry Edwards, Michael Fraser, Keon George, Neil Matthew, Daniel McDonald, Nicholas Redhead, and uh, Sunil Nahran, who is the, uh, that's the lineup for the Ginger Generals. The umpires are out there in the middle. Conditions look very bright and wonderful. And uh, of course, the ground is well shown as uh, the Ginger Generals walking out on the field. And the opening pair for the Saffron Strikers also going out. So everything looks lovely and well, and everything looks rather refresh, even Ali de Billet. Oh, yeah. Good morning to you, Pastor, and good morning to all our listeners, wherever they may be, listeners and viewers. And as you said, a beautiful day for cricket. Uh, first match, third place playoff. Probably both teams are a bit disappointed that they didn't get into the finals. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, both of them, of course, had the potential, the capability of uh, getting there. But uh, cardinal errors, of course, all of these things, I would say, uh, Ali, they're... There are little things that you need to pick up in life. Everything is about uh, learning in life and opportunities lost may never be regained. And uh, there were opportunities out there that uh, were not taken. And uh, that, of course, brought about the position now. So they're, they're going to be a tussle for the third place payoff. And it looks as though Nicholas Redhead will be opening the attack from the far end the southern or river road end and the two opening pair the opening pair rather of uh, Lyndon Lawrence and uh, is it uh, Nicosi? Kendall George this morning will be opening rather than uh, rather than Nicosi St. Hilaire and uh, as I said early on Nicholas Redhead will be bowling from the far end there here's uh, uh, the two players uh, outside the circle are uh, on the offside. That's the third man and the, sque and the sweeper. The rest of the players are inside the circle because this is the power play. And in the power play, only two fielders are allowed to be outside the circle. So here one is the first delivery is read it in and bowls to Lawrence gets a short rising delivery that he can do no more than push out on the offside uh, just in front of square. And uh, there is no run. A little bit of carry there, good bunks rather, with well, the first delivery. Yeah, it's sort of, it's, you can <coughs> say normal now that the first set of deliveries usually have a bit of life in it, but that don't last that long, and it's obviously we know it's the sort of f uh, effect from the preparation earlier this morning. Turns once more from the top of his mark, his redhead begins his beautiful approach, passes the umpire now, and balls to Lawrence. Lawrence is hitting that in the air. I think the catch is going to be taken. Yes, yeah, gone. Oh, well, that really was a nothing shot. It really was a nothing shot. He was looking maybe just to push the ball up on the onside. The ball may have just stuck on him a little bit. Matthew coming in there from mid on. He had to really come forward and then dive and took the catch. So Lawrence goes. Only the second ball of the day caught Matthew there at mid on of the bowling of Redhead without scoring and the Saffron, the Saffron, they got a setback quite early. Yeah, well, this is the 10th day or the 11th day of the competition and every day and the first overs, the first two, three overs, the wicket seems to have just this uh, way of playing where the ball seems to hold up a bit. And um, Lawrence going into the drive, the ball wasn't pitched right up. Maybe later in the day, that would have been going way over the boundary. But he sort of lose some of his pace on his way to to Lawrence and, and just play that dolly catch to to arm it off. Yeah, it really was a dolly in the end. Well, he did have to come in, and uh, but it stayed uh, quite sufficient time in the air for him to settle himself and take the catch. Mikel Joseph replaces uh, Lawrence and uh, he settles. Both men of similar stature 
as here once more is threaded in now and balls to Joseph. Joseph gets a shot, delivery is right on top of it, played it very well. Edwards comes in very quickly from cover, just uh, to the left. And uh, the batsman had time to cross for one. So Saffron strikers off the mark, one for one, brings uh, George into strike. So already there need to be some repair oh, there for the Saffron strikers. Having the loss of uh, Lyndon Lawrence, caught Matthew of the bowling of Redhead. So it will be now George taking his first delivery. Just spins the bat and then gets over it. Begins to tap away at the crease. Looks up and sees that Redhead is coming in now and bowls. And uh, he is off the back foot. Short rising delivery. And uh, just pushes it out there to Cato who is feeling at uh, a short extra cover. And uh, there is no run. A very important position there, that short extra cover. Because if the batsman is driving, there are acres of space between that uh, deep cover and uh, the conventional mid-off. So it's a, a very important field that has to be feeling there. One who is quick off his feet and one who's got good pair of hands. It's got to be an all-rounded fielder. Moves in once more. He's read it in and bowls. And he's living that up to mid on. Almost carrying. Similar sort of situation there that brought the demise of, of Lawrence. And fortunately, this one was straighter. And to the left of the fielder, Matthew coming in. And they were able to scamper for a single. Yeah, and the same effect of the wicket. Uh, the ball not coming through as it will uh, probably a bit later in the day. And again, uh, uh George going for the drive and not timing it and fortunately as you said it was a bit straighter than the uh, Lawrence shot and probably that's why he's still there. Yeah. To be fair to Matthew would have been an, an impossible catch. Here it's spread ahead now with the last delivery of the first over in and bowls to Joseph. Joseph is uh, looking. Ooh, that was close though. He was looking to swing that down to backward square. The ball hit him maybe somewhere on the body and uh, was threatening to go onto the stump. Yes, hit somewhere around the, the arm. Then it came perilously close to the leg stump and just managed to kick it away. He still was alert enough to realize the danger, averted it. And uh, well, all is well that ends well for him. But that was a close call. End of over number one is two for one. And, and uh, as we see, even in that uh, final shot there, from uh, Joseph that the ball he actually played before the ball got onto him and he's chucking him somewhere about the body off the bat and nearly onto the stumps yeah and again uh, early in the day you really have to watch the drives because the ball is not coming through probably as it as you ex expect yeah that's right and that's why I think it's also a good move to start with the fast bowler but they're going to be starting with uh, Edward, Larry Edward, who's had a very good tournament. He's bowled well, rather economical, and he's a go-to man for the general. He moves in now to bowl to George. George is getting a delivery onto the pad. Thought about the single. He's got to hurry. The return comes in and just managed to get back there. And Mikel Joseph, that was up on the onside. I think he might have called him, but uh, George was not responding. He got halfway down the track and had to scamper back. Here once more is Edward. In now and bows to George. George is looking to flick that down the leg side. The keeper is beaten. That's going to go all the way it seems. Yes it does. Crosses the boundary line now. Four wides signaled by the umpire. That was a bad delivery. Sinking down the leg side. Down the leg side. And the keeper really was beaten. Can't fault him at all. And that went down to the boundary for four. So extras have gone to five it's seven for one yeah pretty poor delivery there but it's trying to s probably turn it a bit from just about the leg stump but it carried straight through here he is once more it's edward in and both to george george is looking to hit that over mid wicket doesn't make contact the ball cannons into the pad dribbles out on the outside the umpire has no signal or you know signal let by so extras rather healthy already rather early days uh, in the innings, and extras have gone already to six, eight for one. Saffron strikers. Mikel Joseph comes in to strike. Edward, once more, from the northern end, 
left arm orthodox round the wicket bowls and he tucks that just behind square on the leg side well played use the angle well and just use the tide of the ball turn the face of the bat onto it got it just behind square got a single so Mikel Joseph go goes to two and the total has moved on to nine for one George now comes back into strike he is in once more is uh, Edward bowls to George George is advancing down the track and uh, well bowled I think the bowler saw him coming Edward and uh, bowled it quicker but still managed to turn it out on the leg side so the fine leg coming in couldn't prevent the single one more to the total George has gone to two a saffron strikers 10 for one we're in over number two slow start here by saffron strikers this is the third place playoff between these two teams as Edward once more wrong the wicket uh, left arm in now and bowls to Joseph Joseph is bowled oh that was the quicker one and you know what he was on to the back foot he should have been pushing forward the middle stump rock back let's look at it fast the ball he should have been onto the front foot he went to the back foot and he was beaten for pace well bowled there by larry edward and he get got the vital wicket the imported wicket of, of michael joseph he's gone for two and saffron strikers they're in trouble they're now 10 for two well uh, edwards has continued to deceive the batters with that arm ball the ball from the left hand the left hander where you think that it's a ball going away from the right hander he gets in to slide into the right hander and again the batsman on the back foot looking just to tuck it uh, he came into him um, also i thought that he misread the pace and and when the wicket is like that early sometimes it also do help the, the, the slower bowlers because you get very in pace and that one was a much quicker one into the right hander uh, didn't seem to read it and was bold. Yeah, didn't read it at all. And Alias, I think also the fact that he was onto the back foot did not give him the sort of room to be able to negotiate the, the slide of the ball. If he had pushed out onto the front foot, he would have stood with a chance. So the new batsman, Nicosi Sintelier, who has come out here at number four, and uh, Edward will be bowling just a one delivery to him, legal one that is. He is there now and both the St. Hilaire who is turning that out on the onside. There's an appeal for like before, not given out, the umpire would say that's sliding down the leg side. And besides that, he got a nick onto it. So the over comes to an end. Successful over there for both uh, batsmen in bowlers, beg your pardon. In Redhead got one and uh, Edward got one. Saffron strikers, they're on the back foot. They're 11 for two. Yeah, well, uh, a pretty good start by the generals uh, picking up two early wickets. In fact, two wickets in the first two overs, uh, just 11 runs. Just the kind of start they will want against a powerful batting lineup of, of strikers. Well, I think both batsmen would feel that uh, they aired Lawrence and uh, then uh, Mikel Joseph. So it's going to be once more redhead, and he's going to get ready to bowl to St. Hilaire, the new batsman. He's in now and bowls to St. Hilaire, who gets onto the back foot, cuts that over over the backward point. It's going to go into the boundary. Yes, it does. Four runs. Short onto the back foot. It was cuttable, and he hit that over the head of Edward there, feeling at backward point. And Edward's not a tall player, and it went down to the boundary for four. So the first aggressive intention there for the morning because he's into there he's now gone to five it's 15 for two well the was offered it was short and wide and uh he obliged by just using the upper bit sort of lift for the bat and getting it over that man at point it's a good shot though safe yes here's redhead once more in and, and both the centillaire who is coming forward and just drives the ball easily up to mid off as kato comes in uh, from extra cover, picks the ball up, but the batsman had time to cross for one. That was a good delivery. Pitched up, inviting him for the drive. Didn't go for the big booming drive, but rather just pushed it up to uh, uh, up to an extra cover. And he got a single. He's moved on to six. St. Hilaire, the totals moved rather lazily to 16 for two. 
as George now comes into strike. Well, he would have seen the previous two batsmen, the previous batsman that out caught. So driving at this stage might have to reframe a bit. As uh, here once was read it in and both to George. George is swinging that nice shot, fine shot. Use the tide of it down to backward square for four. Well, he didn't bother to move. It was pitched just about the leg stump. And look how he swung it nicely. Just used the pace of the ball well. And before the backward point, backward square fielder could move, it was traveling down to the boundary. Got there so fast. Four runs to George. Uh, a lovely shot. The total has moved on to 20 for two. Well, once the ball does not go to that fielder in the circle, literally straight to him, there's a very little chance of anyone cutting it off. And again, a very safe shot. Here, once more, is Redhead from the far end, the River Road end. He's got this lovely approach. He's passing the umpire now and both to George. George is driving, driving well. Gets it on to the sweeper. They've gone for one. They won't come back for the second. The return comes in to the keeper. Good service there. And uh, the batsman can get only one. So uh, George has gone to seven. Nicosi St. Hilaire, who is on six now, comes in to strike. And the total 21 for two. Redhead into his second over. One for 12 so far. Goes back from the top of his mark. There's a third man, backward point, sweeper. Extra cover is short in Cato. Mid on, mid off. And uh, there is a mid wicket, square leg, and a fine leg. Here is Reddit in now, bowls, and uh, push the ball up on the onside is uh, St. Hilaire. And would get a single. He is now gone on to seven. Both batsmen now on seven. And, uh, well, all sevens are on the batsman's score sheet and also all the twos there as the total. 22 for two, both batsmen on seven. As uh, Redhead goes back, moving back rather pensive, turns from the top of his mark in lovely conditions here at the National Stadium, moves in. Lovely approach. There now on both of George. George is getting good delivery right up on the leg stump. And had to hustle in the end, as he seemed to be just uh, taking his time to go and the fielder coming in very quickly and uh, had to really hustle up there in the end as uh, Matthew, I think it was coming in there from mid on. So they got the single at the end of the over, three overs gone, the current runner rate six, sorry, 7.67. And it's 23 for two. George, uh, speaking to him not too long ago, he said, you know, sometimes he has not played. And 10 straight days of cricket, he just having that effect on him because he really labored to get down to the other end. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and almost brought about his demise. So the opening pair, um, having it tidy, rather tidy, for uh, uh, the captain, Cato, I'm sure he's, very impressed and uh, Fraser Michael Fraser is going to move in to bowl to George similar feel to that which was given to Edward and uh, Fraser good veteran understands this game very well and plays within his limits it's gonna move in now to bowl to George George looks up they're pushing back the mid on to right back on the boundary and the sweeper on the outside has come inside the circle. Here is Fraser moving in with his first delivery and both to George. George is looking to swing that over a long on, does not make contact. The ball pitched outside the off stump. So you have really had a, to have a quite a bit of skill to take that from outside the off stump and heave it over long on. Didn't make contact. Keep a collecting behind the stumps. And with the mid off inside the circle and the long on outside, I wonder why that's the direction he's heading. And his Fraser again moves in to bowl to George. George is coming forward and driving nicely. He gets it just to the right of the square leg fielder. They will in fact get two down to the just down to square leg, just behind square rather, and they get two. So two more to George. Could see he was really looking for one shot. One shot. Who's cheating out there? Is that George? Well, I think he's cheated himself too, <laughs> hasn't he? Yeah. So the umpires picked that up. And uh, total 24 for two. 
Here he is once more. His sprays are moving into ball to George. And George is advancing down the track. Misses everything. And uh, the keeper collecting. Maybe if he was standing up. That would have been an easy stumping. I think that's the second uh, short run that we've had yeah, in the tournament. tournament. I, I think yeah. he has Does that mean the second? Uh, oh, he was the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, George. Don't do that, George. You're the culprit on two occasions. <laughs> oh, you little cheater. Uh, there he goes. <laughs> Taps away the crease. Here's <laughs> Fraser moving in. <laughs> Once more passes the umpire. And both of George George is hitting that. Beautiful shot. Fine shot. Four runs. Well, with the mid on, on the wider side, it was pitched up. And he came forward and drove it nicely through the line. Beautiful shot. He got four. So he's gone to 13 into double figures. And uh, the total has now moved on to 28 for two. The question of the, the short run, uh, mm. sometimes it's better that you lose a run than lose your wicket. <laughs> you did make that point, <laughs> didn't you? Yes. <laughs> oh, there's some pros and cons there. Here was Moise Fraser. Just moves in. Did start and stop. He reapproaches. There now and bowls. And uh, he's tugging that one, George, down to the deep uh, mid wicket boundary. Uh, Nicholas Redhead is down there, does good service, sends the ball back to the keeper. And uh, George gets one. He's gone to 14. And the total has moved to 29 for two. 29 for two. <laughs> As uh, Sintelay comes in to strike. Here once more is Fraser. We'll move into ball to Sintelay now. He's just about passing the umpire and balls to Sintelay. Outside the yard stump. Hits that high in the air. Somebody, the keeper, is going under it. Takes a catch. Well, Sintelay goes. He turned his back, knew that he was in trouble. Didn't cue it well. The ball took the bottom part of the bat. And one hand was also off the bat. I think uh, if the call was early. Keeper, my catch. And in the end, he took it quite comfortably, Benjamin. Uh, just falling as he took the catch. So... St. Legos caught Benjamin, the keeper of uh, the bowling of Fraser. He's gone for seven Saffron Strikers. They're 29 for three as over number four comes to an end. Yeah, a good, uh, good catch in the end by the keeper. But again, uh, the batsman swinging and the ball not seems to come in through as quickly as he wanted to. He lost the grip on his bat, lost his shape. And played the ball just high up in the air. And, and from the time he played it, he realized he was in trouble. He started wa literally walking. So out goes St. Hilaire. In comes the captain, Brian John. Well, Ali, you made a point, of course, uh, the whole idea of the, uh, of the short run. Do you think that some of these players, um, you know, have that in mind? That, look, I might be run out here, so let me go short. No, I, I think most <laughs> of the time they just didn't look where they were going. <laughs> because I don't think he was under any pressure really to get back for the second run. Although we saw him previously seems to be in problem for a singer that looked very comfortable. So sometimes a little aches and pain there, <laughs> you know, you think that the umpire is not looking. <laughs> well, Ryan John is going to be facing up to Daniel McDonald. Change the bowling, of course, from the far end. Here is McDonald in bowls to John. John turns it up neatly on the onside. Lot would depend upon him. He got, gets his first run. He's off the mark. One. Strikers. Saffron Strikers. 30 for three. This is not a good sight for the Saffron Strikers. They're not off to a good start at all. Kendall George comes into strike. He's 14. Can he play a really top class in his hair? As McDonald is in and bowls. And George is looking to heave that over long on. Doesn't make contact. Benjamin behind the stumps didn't call it cleanly either. But no harm done. Just uh, did the little repair work. Goes around, picks the ball up and sends it back to McDonald. Who is in. Bowls outside the arse stump. Takes that ball from out there. That's George. And tucks it down to the lawn on area. And gets a single. As uh, it's Ryan John who now comes into strike. 31 for 3. John is on 1. Just a 1 delivery his face so far. Here is McDonald. In now. And bowls. Turn neatly. Just behind square. On the leg side. Gets a single. Uh, to the right of Narayan. Who moved across rather quickly. Slightly heavy set. 
but I thought he handled um, that distance fairly well. One more to John, who's gone to two. 32 for three. Brings back uh, George into strike. As McDonald bowls to George, George is opening the face of the bat. Glides it down to third man. He's got to hurry. Uh, that's John. Will come back for the second one as Larry Edwards threw to the keeper's end. But he really was not accurate at all. And the ball was backed up down on the wide mid-wicket area. They got two. George has now gone to 17. So he scored half the amount of runs. He's there now is McDonald. Hits the ball in the air. The ball is going down to the cover area. The catch is taken. No dropped. Well, it was a brilliant effort. It really was. They come back for the second run as the return comes into uh, the keeper. It stayed in the air for quite some time. And the they fielder had to come in. Uh, who was that? Was that Fraser? Yeah, that was Fraser coming in there from deep extra cover spectacularly hurled himself forward now he had to <coughs> really uh make a lot of coverage and uh, didn't pull off the catch it would have been a stunning catch indeed the over comes to an end five overs gone john is two 19 to george is 36 for three saffron strikers that fraser would have gotten maximum points for that effort he really sprinted in and threw himself i don't think he really got to it and it dropped just before him. But again, you see the batsman sort of losing the grip on the hand because they seem to be playing a bit too early. Too early. And the ball uh, going high into the air. Unfortunately, uh, Fraser being probably too deep, didn't get to it. Right. So, here is uh, another bowling change. Right now, Charles is going to bowl. He's going to be bowling to John. Well, and John. Well, this is the halfway stage as Charles left arm orthodox wrong the wicket to bowl to John outside the awesome shot and a white signal by the umpire he was looking to cut that through the offside now John is a very strong man he's a um, well balanced cricketer muscular as he's in once more Charles in and bowls to John. John gets a delivery that he doesn't hit very well. It's going down to the deep mid-wicket boundary. The catch is taken on the second attempt. Well, it looked a little bit of uh, a bit of a <laughs> danger there as uh, the uh, redhead was coming around. He had to move from that uh, mid-wicket area. He pouched the ball for a while and then it bubbled out, but had the frame of mind to, to go for it on the second attempt. And in the end, he took the catch. Now, Laurie Edwards was also coming in. I don't know if there was any lack of communication, but uh, the catch has been taken, whatever the case is. And so, John goes. He could feel bad about himself for that shot because it was short enough. And he was caught down there at the mid-wicket area. Read it coming in very quickly, took the catch. He's gone for two. Saffron strikers, they're 37 for four. And in real trouble at 37 for four in the in the sixth over. But again, uh, the batter going for a big shot and, and seemed not to be able to time it properly. Of course, we know Ryan John is a very good hitter at the ball. And that one was not hit probably dropping half between the way hit and, and the fielder. A good catch by Redhead in the end because he was challenged not only by the ball but also by the fielder coming in. <laughs> and I thought that the fielder should have given him a little more way. But in the end, he, he held on and held on to a good catch. Charles balls outside the off stump. George goes on to the back foot, hits it out to cover. As uh, the extra cover fielder and Cato running across to his left, covers about 20 yards. The batsman had time to cross for one. So, George has gone to 19. The total has moved on to 38 for 4. Sherman Lewis, who replaced Ryan John, comes in to strike. Can he play a good cameo here for his team? Settles as Charles, Reynolds Charles, moves in. Bowls to Lewis. Lewis is turning that up to mid-wicket. No, they've gone for one. Reddit comes off the boundary, rather athletic-like, and sends a good return to the keeper. Well, in the older days, they probably wouldn't quite call it good because they believe that the ball must always come straight into the glove. But sometimes you've got to hit it into the turf and let it skid off. All those are dynamics you have in more than day cricket. Here once more is Charles in now and bowls to George. George is uh, turning. Maybe, well, we'll just wait to see what the umpire says. It's leg by. So the ball, they hit the pad and 
went to a shot third man and uh, one move to the total is now gone to 40 40 for four extras have now gone on to eight rather healthy so the top scorer second top scorer shot delivery pulled down to a mid wicket again uh redhead who's had quite a bit of work to do so far today both bowling and feeling that was a lovely return into the glove of the keeper but the batsman crossed for one one more to lewis has gone to two george comes back into strike he's on 20 as charles is in bows to uh bows to george who comes forward gets a full toss and pushes the ball down to long on where it's fielded there by larry edward and uh, th they cross for one so the over has been completed six overs gone they're going at exactly seven runs per over. George a lot depends upon him. He's on 21. Lewis is two. 42 for four. Saffron Strikers, of course, uh, uh, sent into bat. This is the third place playoff. And after some words from Ali de Bella, then it will be Rafael Crony. 42 for four in the six over. Not where uh, the Strikers would have liked to be. However, they still have uh, George there, Lewis there, and the batters to come. And they really will need to sort of upbeat the tempo. Of course, uh, George is one of our well-known soccer artists, and maybe he'll have to play a carnival in it. Uh, this ball is played down to Todd, man. He's going to run very close to the boundary. As uh, Edwards, uh, chasing off, I just stopped it uh, just about 10 yards from the boundary. So two runs. Kendall George on 23, uh, 44 for 4. Uh, Safan Stryker has been sent into bat in this third place playoff. Uh, good morning, you, Ali. Uh, good morning, Rafael. Uh, this one again comes off the edge, and Edwards, uh, who in that short third man area, move quickly to his right, to his left. Uh, so one more to George, he moves to 24. Have been tough going for Safan Strikers. It's 45 for 4. Daniel McDonald in the second over. Uh, this one is driven down to long off. And coming off the boundary, they're going to come back for two runs there. Uh, Fila had a lot of running to do to his right on the boundary. So two more to Lewis. Safan Strikers really would be hoping that uh, this pair would probably see for the next two overs. Lewis is hitting straight and this one going to clear. No, just drop one bounce uh, goes uh, over the ropes for another four. Again, Ali, as he looked here, hitting straight and really n not much danger when you're hitting straight. And he played it well down to that long off area for four. 51. So the 50 is up and Again, he's looking to push it down to third man. Again, ball beating the bat. Uh, this partnership so far 14. A uh, run rate just, of, uh, just at 7.46. Short delivery. Again, uh, looking to cut, make no contact. I uh, will be disappointed that short delivery sh probably should have hit, uh, hit down to uh, square cover. And one of the areas we have uh, continuously talked about with the batsman pulling themselves away and trying to cut instead of going into the ball and there on two occasions he was pulling himself and trying to cut or steer and miss a boat uh, at uh, 51 for four in the seventh over uh, obviously a position that they would have not like to be at this stage but they still got three overs and um, we have seen uh, some serious hitting so far in the competition in the last couple of overs uh, and so they should be trying to get over the 80 mark uh, so Reynold Charles already picked up one wicket, left arm, and this one is it, uh, straight to cover. Uh, Keto uh, fields. So we are seeing Safan Strikers uh, playing for the third place playoff, a team who would have done very well in the preliminary games. Uh, wide off the off stump, uh, no shot offered. Again, George a little disappointed. Why it wasn't called? Charles uh, left arm uh, wrong the wicket ball. This one is pitch up, and this one is played to cover. Again, no timing. Uh, bringing the ball right up. 
and George pushed it a couple of K2 fields, so he gets one more, he moves it 25, 52 for four, we are in the eight over, so really have been, and this and he's looking to swing, that's Lewis looking to take it up from outside the off, so he made no contact, again looking to hit it, uh, dunk this, that deep back was square, which is vacant, 52 for 4, over number 8, Charles in the second over, short, and Lewis is sitting his dunk to long on, this going to clear, just w over the long on boundary for 6, again short delivery, and given the right treatment, Red ahead who is at a wide long and just had to look at it uh, to just clear the rope for six. Yeah, good shot and good timing. Uh, the batter seems to be having just a bit of problem in timing the, the short deliveries, but this one was well timed. Yeah, we have seen that the ball is not actually coming off the wicket as uh, one expected to, and I think that resulted in a few of the wickets to fall this morning. Another short delivery hit down to um, mid wicket. Uh, redhead comes off the boundary. So another single to Lewis. He moves to 15, 59 for four. And that completes over number eight. Safan strikers. That's a bad first. They are 59 for four of the eight overs. And in, and in, pro in trouble because uh, that's a pretty low score. But uh, again, this cricket seems to be so competitive that whatever score one team makes, the next team seems to struggle to get to it. Uh, so it's still an open game, but at 59 for four in the eight over, uh, I think um, uh, strikers would have uh, liked to be in a better position. We are seeing the soft dismissal, Lyndon Lawrence looking for the drive caught at mid on. Again, really soft dismissal. Uh, we see also Sentinel. Eh? So a number of those short ran John just out there was a short ball, almost a long hop. But I think he was only into the shot again, the ball not really coming off. And uh, only was able to hit it in the air and the redhead uh, coming in from that mid wicket area. Taking it on the second attempt. So just two, the two overs left, so and, and then they really would like to get probably over the 80 mark. So Edwards uh, and Edward in the second over from the southern end. As, uh, ball to Lewis. Lewis looking to hit this over mid wicket. Uh, made no contact. Actually, actually, he's bold. Cool. <laughs> well, yeah. We look at the replay here. Yes, uh, looking to hit it over mid wicket and went straight to him and probably hitting the leg stump. Uh, so Lewis uh, uh, looking for the big one there and missed and was bold. Well, you have to. And um, again, Edwards continued to deceive the batters with that ball coming in. And you can see it pitch and actually pitch about middle and hitting the leg stump. And a uh, quicker delivery. Uh, Lewis trying to swing, didn't make contact. Uh, good delivery and good bowling, uh, keeping the ball up and not allowing the batsman to get under. In fact, the entire uh, general team has bowled pretty well. Uh, I think they're just probably one six that has been hit so far in the inning. Well, they have used the the wicket, the pitch really wisely in that the left arm spin of of Larry Edward, not bowling too far, just slowing it up a bit. And seem to be getting grip, a little, a little grip, a little assistance from the from the wicket. And uh, Asofa picked up two for eight in the second over. So Alec Moses, uh, the right-handed Moses, he's going to face Edwards again, and he's uh, beaten by this delivery on the back foot, looking to play it somewhere on the outside, on the offside. And that ball went through. Quicker delivery by Edward. Uh, he's. Uh, coming around the wicket once again to Moses. And for this delivery, Moses is playing the cover. Uh, uh, Captain Keto is in that position and would be feeling pretty happy with the situation at the moment. Early 59 for 5. As can ask for a better position. Edward. And this one is comes off the edge and goes to that Todman region. Uh, Andrew, who is. Uh, fields and the batsman take one run so Moses off the mark 60 for 5 number over number 8 key to in his second over short third man uh, backward point on the boundary cover We've just seen key to just going back at cover there 
shortly we again looking to plead on to third man and really uh, probably would have been better did to play an attacking shot that's a short delivery but the bunks and the probably turn would have uh, deceived him because that one was one that turned away edward this final delivery and this is hit to mid wicket and uh, george the batsman just jog a single uh, the feeder comes off the boundary so that's the end of the, the ninth over and Safan strike is really struggling at 61 for 5. But um, probably on a psychological uh, situation with the uh, uh, strikers, uh, they would have played probably the best in the preliminary rounds and um, not getting to the final probably could have a sort of mental pressure on them. But um, in other competitions, they have changed that format in a wrong robin where the team winning the wrong robin stage gets two chances at getting in to the final they play the first semi-final and the winner goes on the loser still have another opportunity and i think is is that sort of mental thing they are trying to avoid well it's a first of its kind this uh t10 tournament here we know the uh the ipl cpl you know you you have a second chance um this is a system that have been introduced uh, just a few years ago i would think um uh, being the force of a sky in here, you just you go the what we are custom with as freezer, and this one is played down to third man. Again, uh, George just amble a single, uh, takes the score to 62 for five. Yeah, I, I think as first tournament here, we would have probably would have gone through uh, the system in 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 actually using the system that we are custom with. But I I do believe you know going forward. Um, it will be looked at, and certainly uh, maybe some adjustment might be made as made as we look forward to other tournaments. Uh, this one is hit down to long off, and Andrew comes off the boundary. So a single to Moses, 63, 63 for five. But important point you made earlier: the fact that Safan Striker was not played uh, so well in the. Uh, preliminary games uh, they actually ended uh, ended on 15 points and um, we have seen them the last of the semi-finals you know I, I think would have really hurt them George faces Fraser short delivery again he's looking to swing uh, made no contact again so important to get in the position to play shots and there yeah he was swinging and made no contact but just to get back to the point uh, with the uh, Safan strikers I think the the loss in the in that semi final game they, had, they went in with all the confidence they would have defeated uh, Nutmeg Warriors on two occasions and therefore and they had a good start the wicket of Fletcher uh, really good start at Fraser to George and right of George looking to drive and not timing uh, just seemed to be coming off the bat boxing and the keeper Weebel Benjamin. Fields scoring in 63 for five. In, in fact, Kearney, in some of the competitions that are played, as so this one is played, they don't worry the third and fourth place playoff because uh, the teams are so disappointed not getting into the final that not much is put into that game. Well, we saw it happen in even our local uh, T20 tournament with St. David. Yeah, yeah. As and this one is it high in the air. Uh, someone is going to get on it. Let's see. Well, Two passes go into it. Uh, and he Freezer, Freezer, uh, <laughs> Freezer <laughs> dropped it again. <laughs> and really, he has a difficult time in taking catches. The ball went in the air. Slow delivery. And uh, George looking for a big hit. And uh, probably, probably, uh, we look at it. We play. There's something happening after that catch is being dropped. And we're going to see. And uh, a run out. As Moses uh, looking to take the single and was run out there, as we paying, we was paying attention on the catch there, but the batsman they looking for a single, and Moses not being able to make his ground. Uh, so despite the drop catch, uh, they still have been able to to pick up the wicket, 64 for six. Well, they had to try for uh, to get that extra run, but uh, Fraser was not having a pretty good time in the entire competition catching. Uh, maybe should I just leave that one for the wiki keeper who was uh, probably in a good position as he is to take the catch. But he dropped it. Of course, uh, not under real pressure in terms of the score, 64 for 6. 
I uh, think um, uh, Generals is in a pretty good position. So George is going to face uh, final delivery as Fraser to George, and he's driving straight back, and uh, it's dropped again. And uh, certainly, uh, that's the final delivery at 64 for 6 after 10 overs. And Ginger General really would feel pretty happy with the situation. As that ball went straight back to Fraser. And again, he was not able to hold on. Yeah, but uh, he bowled a good last over. Just two runs coming in the last over were 10-10. Uh, that, that's a pretty good over. So 64 for 6 and 10. Of course, nothing close to what uh, they would have expected when they started here today. And um, of course, uh, uh, generals are feeling probably very happy. They have um, uh, probably got the team way below what the past score has been throughout the competition. And again, probably we go back to the psychological effect of not getting into the to the uh, finals. Maybe played a big role in that very low score. Yeah, I, I certainly agree. But I think we have to give uh, Ginger General some credit. I think they used the wicket to their advantage. Um, the ball was not really coming on, so so shot making certainly would have been difficult. And they slowed it up. That last over from Fraser really didn't try the ball too fast. And uh, you know you're slowing it up, and and even the shot that where George was was dropped there, you see he had to reach for it, and uh, that was the problem I think with the most of the Safan strikers batsmen in that, the fact that the ball was not coming on as they expected to, uh, it suddenly made it difficult for them, and as such you know they ended up on 64 for six. But just to give you uh, the scorecard, uh, Lawrence, I see you were scored by Matthew. Uh, only faced two balls at uh, George Not of 28. Played a good hand, uh, 32 deliveries. Uh, Joseph uh, was bowled by Edwards uh, for two, and he faced four deliveries. And again, uh, Joseph was uh, again a soft dismissal. Again, a due to again the ball not coming on. He had a he had a good tournament so far with the bat. Uh, Sentler uh, caught Benjamin, and he went he went for seven. Uh, Lewis. Bowled by Edwards, 15, Moses run out, Fraser 2, and Philip not out, not. So we, we saw in the inning that um, some of the batsmen who would have done well, the Lawrence, uh, the St. Lair who had really good knocks, and, and also the Joseph, they were not able to get off. Ryan John himself uh, didn't last very long, and uh, really uh, falling rather cheaply, uh, six, 64 for 6. Well, we're going to probably just uh, uh, look at at the bowling. Um, Redhead, uh, he had two overs, uh, one for 14. Uh, Edward, two overs, uh, two for 10. Uh, Fraser, two overs, no made nine runs, one wicket. Daniel McDonald, two overs, no made 16 runs, no wicket. And Renal Charles, two overs, no made 13 runs, one wicket. So we see... In the in this game, that the spinners were able to hold their own, keeping it uh, pretty tightly. Yeah, but um, once the wicket have some sort of a assistant, uh, uh, both uh, bowlers, both type of bowlers could be effective. Uh, the spinner obviously will get a little grip, and the ball might turn a bit more, probably a uh, bounce a bit more than normal. So both both bowlers, the pacers and the spinners, have an advantage. And again, um. Early in the morning, we did see that little bit of assistance uh, going to the bowling side, and today probably exaggerated a bit by the poor batting, uh, by the poor batting of strikers. So we see uh, again right ahead uh, in the wicket column, and I think he he has now gone to 11 picking up wickets. Uh, really had a, a a pretty good tournament in terms of bowling. In all the fast bowlers, to me, he look he look uh, w probably the most impressive. Um, He's run up by the way he get to the wicket and and does uh, shows that he's he's a bowler that can that can move to the next level. Yeah, and and, and uh, I know him personally and seeing him train, you know, he's one of the hard workers at his at his training. So you know, one expect that probably he will move forward and and as you said, and Pastor Wom has also uh, spoke of it. His sort of his run up to the wicket, his approach, his delivery, his stride, and everything seems to be in the making of a, a good fast bowler so as we we look forward to the uh to the the ginger general's reply but we we will probably stay on for 
for just a reply just in a few minutes but maybe just to look at the tournament so far Ali in terms of uh, you know uh, your opinion in terms of what we have seen uh, over the last last weeks well I, I think it's an extremely good tournament um, I've watched some of the other 10-10 uh, and I think we are right up there uh, quite a number of big hitters in in in, the, in this competition we have seen some some beautiful innings where um team seems to be totally out of it and has come back and 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 played some excellent shots we see some good fight we see some good catches we see some good bowling we see uh, just all wrong cricket was played uh, there it wasn't just um people coming and swing as long as 10 10 you come in and you just swing your bat i don't think so we see excellent batting good timing at the ball massive sixes in this ground uh, and i so and i think that all leads to you know for a first tournament 10 10 i i think we could only go forward from here well we look at we look at the amount of sixes that have been hit in the tournament i think uh it's w it's way over 300 and 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 certainly one would think that um uh the boundary is small yes it is um specifically at a certain size for this tournament but again, it says something of, of, of the quality of the pitch that you are playing on, in that uh, generally, you know, you know shot making has been good. Uh, I think, uh, you know, 10 10 tournament is a sort of tournament that really runs it to, uh, you know, the, the batters on show in terms of, of the batting. And uh, it speaks to the quality of the service that they had to play on. Yeah, um, and we used two wickets throughout the tournament, and both wickets were very uh, good, very accommodating to the batters. Um, today probably yeah, a little bit on the slow side, but generally the wickets were pretty good, and um, the outfield in itself also very good, and and, and so international standard. Yeah, just to see that you know, and, and as we look at the outfield, uh, we look around and this 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 facility, as you, as you know, we are we are now preparing for for that T Twenty uh, international, uh, in just about two weeks time, but certainly the. The condition really look really top class, and uh, we should be in, in really good position for that T20 tournament. Yeah, um, no question about it. Of course, the ground and, and that ground has probably uh, such an excellent draining system that you know rain literally has to be falling for the game can't play. Once the wicket are properly covered, uh, once it's uncovered, the games will be played. So I think yes, we good wicket, good old feel. Uh, proper preparation and uh, we're all set yes and uh, as the umpires uh, make their way out uh, we, we do expect that the, the the wicket as the sun beats out and again it's we didn't just to see the condition is very good we have been really blessed with with uh, with good condition despite we had we had some one of the games being rain out but I think that the groundsman would have done a fine job to make sure that uh, we had cricket right through and uh, just outside of that day which we had consistent rain I, I think that um, we, we certainly are blessed with good condition that uh, the sun is shining brightly and, uh, and certainly we expect that uh, the ginger general is going out to uh, to get chased at 64 they should go out with a lot of confidence I don't think they are under any pressure um, they have um, batted well throughout the competition of course that's one of the team they they would have placed fourth uh, in the preliminary rounds and had an opportunity also of getting into the final and so we wait to see if probably that uh, psychological effect of not getting into the final also affect them as it did in my opinion with strikers so the 64, 64 for six, that Saffron Strikers of the 10, that is paltry, it's rather poor. So, just looking at the tournament points, Dream 11 Spice L, T10, Saffron Strikers after 10 matches, one seven loss, two Pacers, one six loss, three Ginger General. They won four, lost five. Nutmeg Warriors played uh, ten, of course. Uh, won four, lost five. Uh, Bailey Blasters 
one three lost uh lost five sorry six and clove challengers one three and lost six So, let's see the response here by Ginger General. That's Kato, the captain, is joined out there by Donald McDonald. And uh, Kim Charles is going to start the attack. Here is Charles in now. And both to Kato. Kato is getting away with delivery outside the Ostom confirmed. That's a wide by the umpire. So, Ginger General, they're off the mark immediately. Charles again will move in. Right arm, off spin, way outside the Austin, beats the keeper, beats the lone slip. That's John. Is going to go very close to the boundary, pull back just inside. And they will, in fact, come back for what would be the second run. The, uh, the signal by the umpire says that it's wide. Yeah. So, total no move on to, to four. Without loss. Sorry, Rico. Here once more. Is Charles in and bows to Kato. Kato is off the back foot and cuts, cuts well down to the sweeper position. Will get a comfortable single as uh, Lewis is off the boundary. Sends a strong return to the keeper. Pushes him back. One more to the total. It's gone to five. Kato is off the mark. Daniel McDonald will now come into strike. He's left-handed, so the field will just make a, a bit of adjustments there. To accommodate him. Sort of balance field. Put off side and on side. Four feelers on the on side. The rest on the off side. And understanding that he's a left hander. Left handers tend to be pretty strong through the off side. Here is Charles. White arm. Off spin wrong the wicket. Bowls turned up on the on side. Would get a single. As the return comes into the keeper. So McDonald just got inside the line of it. And turn it down to fine leg. Saw the opportunity. Kato called him. Responded very well. Total has moved by one now to six without loss. As Kato the captain now comes back into strike. Here is Kem Charles. In now and both to Kato. Kato is taking that ball from way outside the off stump. Tugs it uh, down to uh, down to mid wicket. George who just seemed to get in a tangle. And now the batsmen were able to cross for one. So Kato has gone to two. Sort of ugly looking shot there. But he got two. Got one. Total has gone to seven now. Without loss. As it's once more. Kem Charles moving into bowl to McDonald this time. They've strengthened the outside field even more. He comes in now. And bowls. And to this delivery is driving McDonald up to mid off. The ball travelling much too quickly. The bowler didn't stop it, but he did get a hand to it. And it went behind him to mid-off. I think uh, Nikosi Sintele there at mid-off. Here once more is Charles in and bowls to McDonald who is driving. I think he checked it well. They'll go through for a quick single. Got to hurry, just got there. But the return, the throw at the non-striker's end wasn't that good. Backed up in the outfield there. So... Well, one more, one more ball to go in the over. Eight for one. McDonald and Cato, both of them on two. The required run rate is just 6.22. So that should be a canter in the park. Right-handed Cato comes in to strike. Kem Charles is in. Both to Cato. Cato goes way outside the off stump and looks to tuck the ball down to long on. Succeeds in doing that. The over comes to an end. And one wondered why that sort of shot, uh, Rafael Crony could have been just playing an ordinary, um, authentic test match. I'm sorry, uh, ordinary cricket shot. Yeah, poor, uh, poor um, shot selection there by Kito. We have seen him in this over, looking to hit everything over mid wicket, a uh, long on position. And all he needed to do was just a step and just drive down to mid off and pick up a single. So he has been, uh, he had not been doing well the last few games. And but a score of 64, I think she should be should have a lot of confidence going out there and just play normal cricket. Yeah, that's right. Um, 
just wondered why those footwork, why getting out of shape so very early, even before the bowler bowls the ball, there's you no know, need for it. Uh, and this is a difference uh, yeah, when you look at Athenas in terms of his positioning. And that makes uh, his stroke making it uh, so much easier when they get into the right position. That's Laurie William is going to move into bowl to McDonald. Here he is. McDonald comes forward and opens the face of the bat. And tears the ball down to a backward point. Goes the ball traveling rather quickly. Mikkel Joseph, I think, there at backward point. Well, Williams would have bowled, uh, Laurie Williams uh, bowled pretty well in the tournament. Uh, He's one of the players, bowlers, who have been able to move the ball uh, both ways, into the right hander in particular. Moves in and balls, hits that over the long, uh, over the deep mid wicket area, four runs. Six has gone all the way rather. Just got over the boundary line. He came forward, that was slanting into just outside the Austin, but he took it out from outside there and lifted it over mid wicket. Well, that was a great shot. Considering that it was outside the off stump. Yeah, you had to reach for it outside the off stump. Again, uh, if you into right position, you probably would have hit that over mid off. But he picked it up from uh, outside the off stump and really hit it uh, over, just went over mid wicket. Here is, I here is Williams in now balls, looking to, looking to hit that through, mid through the mid off area. But the previous delivery, Rafa, wasn't necessarily a poor delivery. No, it was a good delivery. And. Uh, as I see, you know, that, that's a shot that probably should have been hit over mid-off if he was able to get his right foot just across. 14 without loss. McDonald is 8 as Williams moves in. Balls to McDonald. McDonald hits that through the mid-wicket area. Runs there for him. It's going to go all the way for 4. Shot. And again, he took that from outside the off stump. And uh, just heaved it through mid-wicket. That was a good shot, really. The timing was well. The placement was also good. Uh, and he got four runs. So he's moved very quickly now to 12. And the total has pushed on to 18 without loss. Yes, he picked the gap well. Placed it uh, between that uh, mid on and the mid wicket. And it went across a four. Williams, the ball to McDonough. McDonough hits that in the air. That's a fine shot. That's going to go all the way. It does. That's six runs. Expensive over here by Williams. It was pitched up. And this time he didn't offer... Uh, didn't opt really to go through mid wicket, but decided to just open the face of the bat, lift it over the infield, and uh, Aran John could do no more but just to go and retrieve the ball. He's gone very quickly now to 18 24 without loss. Yes, yeah, safe shot. Uh, pitched up and he hit it over mid off. And uh, just cleared the boundary. Williams to McDonald, who turns it neatly. Good, skillful shot to the right of George. The hustle for one, won't come back for the second. The return comes in. The return is good service. And uh, they get one. So the over has come to an end. A rather expensive over there. The first over there by Laurie Williams. 17 runs coming off his first over. And uh, Ginger General, really they've, they've galloped there now. 25 of without loss of two. Yeah, need uh, 40 from 40 deliveries. So really in total command of this game. And really you're probably going to have a, a pretty early finish in, in this one. Yeah, it looks very much that way. So I think uh, Saffron Strikers, they've got only themselves to, to be blamed. A target of uh, just 64 really, certainly not good at all. Delivery that is hit down to, down to the long off area. Gets a comfortable single. Yeah, I Kato I comes in to strike. Yeah, I just thought that they really didn't bat well. Uh, yes, the ball wasn't coming on. And, and even from the first wicket, when Lawrence went caught in mid-on, you could you realize that you, you had to readjust because it was not easy to play stro stroke making. Even the bad deliveries, they were not able to hit away. Charles is in and balls to Kato. Kato is coming forward and just tries the ball out to Lewis, who's feeling there on the sweeper position. And they get one. So one more to Kato, who's gone to three. It's been a sedate start by him. Three or four deliveries. McDonald being much more enterprising. 20 of 10. He's going to be facing up to Charles. Kim Charles from the far end. Wrong the wicket and balls. McDonald's onto the back foot and pats the ball back on the offside. Charles comes across very quickly. On his bowling, on his follow-through. 
prevents the batsman from crossing for the single. He's in again. Charles bowls to McDonald. McDonald's hitting that hard into the ground. And the ball going back along the track to the bowler, who again picks up. Yeah, again, we see in the difficulty, especially for the slow bowlers, not very easy uh, to get, get the ball away. Charles is in and bowls. McDonald is looking to heave that over the long on area. Didn't make contact. They will now go for what would be a bye. Just wondered really whether there may not have been a stumping chance there. Uh, again, he was looking for the drive. Maybe looking to hit it something over, over mid-off. Uh, took the inside edge. Or not the inside edge, but just seemed to pass ju just outside Lexham. So, Cato comes in to strike. As uh, Charles is back over the wicket and bowls to Cato. Cato is coming forward, drives the ball up to long off. Will get a comfortable single. Long off having to go across to his right. Covered distance very well. So he's now moved on to four. And the total at the end of over number three. 29 without loss. Cato is four. McDonald 20. Yeah, good over by um, by Charles. He in, uh, two of us for 11 runs. And uh, again, it just illustrates how difficult difficult it is to get with, with a slower bowler. And he had been given the ball air. Started off uh, bowling uh, wide of the off stump. Uh, this he would have done rather successful in, in the tournament, picking up wickets, giving the ball air wide off the off stump, and the batsman having to reach for it. And again, we saw in this over the uh, just a little bit of difficulty. McDonald uh, trying to to drive, but he uh, but he had a good spell. Um, just 11 runs coming from his two overs at uh, 29 without loss uh, after three overs. I think uh, Ginger Journal is really in command at this time. Yeah, they certainly are in command. 36 of 42, that's the equation. And when there are less runs, more balls, you know that it is an easy game. So Jensen Phillip is brought into the attack. So it's a sort of all slow attack, more so, except for, of course, uh, Laurie Williams, who bowled the one over. Here is Phillip in and bowls, and Cato was in two minds there as the as to whether he should have really go for the big booming drive or just to uh, just maybe to dab it out on the offside played in the end a sort of nothing shot Philip is in once more and bowls to Cato Cato is coming down the track and lives that high I think it's going to go all the way yes it does straight back over the bowler's head that's gone for six gave it tremendous elevation not as not very hard but it really went high into the sky and it just managed to go over the boundary line for six, he's gone to 10.35 without loss. Yes, safe shot hitting straight back over over the bowler head for six. Again, you, you could see uh, Kato preparing for the big drive through the offside. Here is Philip again to bowl to Kato. Kato is, well, he left that alone. He's down on one knee. Maybe thought about slapping that through the offside. An offside that is um, a very good cordon. They've got five men in the circle there on the offside. Here is again Philip Bowles to Kato. Kato hits that in the air. Goes through the extra cover area. That four runs. To the right rather. To the left of the mid-off field. That is wide. Between the mid-off and extra cover. And it went down to the boundary for four. It was a full toss. And uh, Kato now pushes on to 14-39 without loss. Yeah. Full toss given the right tr treatment. Hit between the extra cover and the mid-off to the boundary for four. Again, you see him uh, looking for a lot of power. And not necessarily the timing which is, which is so necessary. Here's Philip in bowls to Kato. Kato is off. To, he's on. He's on his knee. Really, <laughs> white signal by the umpire, yeah. and uh, that that was way outside the off stump. But he was sort of pulling away, giving himself room on the knee. Just looked rather awkward, like a cow on ice there in the end. But uh, no harm done. Forty without loss. Yeah, he's 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 not getting to the ball. He's pulling away from the ball, trying to slash uh, either over cover, and he. Probably just need to move his left foot, get closer to the ball. Philip bowls to Kato. Kato lifts that inside out. It may not go all the way with it. Yes, it does. Four runs. Well, he didn't really hit it the way he wanted. He did open the face of the bat, but didn't get it with the sort of authority that he liked. And it went over the infield and then limped over the boundary for four. He's gone in a very aggressive mood now, is Kato. He's gone to 18, is 44 without loss. Philip again. Yeah. Stopped by the umpire. Yeah, you see Kato there, Jane, just opening up himself, really looking for power. 
uh, they will get this one over cover uh, not as effective as, as you would love uh, certainly you're looking for the six but it drop a few bounces before you go uh, over the rope philip is in to kato kato is lifting that down to the mid wicket area there's a challenge here um good good um stop there down at the long on area that ryan john did good work there that could have gone for four they got uh one however so kato has gone to 19 mcdonald is 20 kato will be taking strike and after six overs their run rate being 11.25 the ginger generals they're 45 without loss yeah good over for ginger general 16 runs uh, in that uh, first over by philip and the ginger generals really just just needing uh, another 20 20 runs to win and certainly making it look uh, rather easily at 45 without loss yes. Really, who's got the advantage here, Rayville? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, there must be something to laugh about. Uh, yes, certainly, really. it's only one team. Uh, I think that it seems as though Safan Striker would, would, have, would have given up. I think pretty early they came into this match uh, not with the confidence that we saw uh, during the preliminary games. John Havmool. Maybe seeing what has happened with the slow bowlers picking up wickets, uh, they probably actually decided to use the slow bowlers up front. But now uh, we see in the bowling of Sherman Lewis, and he's going to pick it up from that southern end. Who hasn't had the best tournament at all as a senior experienced cricketer? His pace has been pretty okay, but uh, his line and control has not been have not been very well at all. Here's Lewis though comes in to bowl to Cato. He's there and bowls. Cato is advancing down the track. Hits that down to the long on area. The catch is going to be taken. Yes. Taken down there at long on. It seemed to be, is it St. Hilaire? Joseph. Mikel Joseph, beg your pardon. Coming across there to his left and coming in and took what turned out to be a rather comfortable catch. Let's look at it. Yes, he didn't look like dropping it at all. So the first wicket goes. Cato uh, cut down there at the long on area. Uh, of the bowling of uh, Sherman Lewis, he's gone for 19, and the Ginger Generals, they lost the first wicket, is 45 for one. Yeah, poor shot by Keto. Again, you see him pulling away, and a ball pitched up uh, outside the off stump and got it down to long on again. Looking to swing, everything uh, uh, looking to swing uh, to that leg side, that long on mid wicket area. A uh, ball which should have been hit through the covers, it was really over pitch outside the off stump. But uh, he had been batting, looking for a lot of power, just to give himself room and swing. Uh, certainly, this was not a shot that uh, really was needed at that for, the, for that particular delivery. Yeah, I'm disappointed. I think I'm disappointed generally with his uh, overall batting. I'm going to come back to that. We will Benjamin comes in. Uh, here is a uh, uh, delivery by Lewis that he opens the face of the bat and uh, pushes on to third man. We'll get a comfortable two. So he's off the mark immediately. Nice shot there. Came forward and opened the face of the bat. Glided it nicely down to third man and got two. Now, players got to realize what kind of player they, they are, right? Athenaeus, who is a touch player, even if he is in aggressive mood, he tends to keep his shape and doesn't do a whole lot of uh, different things. And he's highly productive. Here once was Lewis in now. And balls and Benjamin again pats the ball along to third man. I think they're going to get two again here as uh, they come back for the second run rather comfortably too. I think he played both of them rather skillfully. Just ease onto the back foot with no problem at all, and it's easy as Sunday morning. Glide the ball, glide the ball nicely down to third man. He's gone very quickly to fourth, 49 for one. Yeah, good sensible batting by Benjamin He's on top of it and steered it down to that. Uh, backward point position the important thing and being positive to pick up two runs I think the last delivery uh, of the last over we come back to that Lewis is here and balls to Benjamin Benjamin turns it neatly just behind square thought about a single George came in very quickly <laughs> seemed to be favoring some um, no maybe some little uh, injury or maybe just it's part of his own <laughs> mannerism but again he he says that he's not as fit as he would like to be but you've got to enjoy him. He's a real fun, fun character. 
49 for one. You're <laughs> making a point about uh, uh, Keto and the running between the wicket. I think the the over before you or the last delivery should have uh, be been looking for two runs. Lewis is in and bowls to Benjamin. Benjamin is driving, driving nicely, pleasant on the eyes. He's going to get another two. The return comes in from the deep, uh, the deep uh, cover area. There's an appeal for run out, but uh, the umpire is not interested in at all. Answers in the negative, is it? Yeah, go ahead. And uh, so they got two. So sensible cricket, I would say here by Benjamin, from the context that he. He has been picking up the gaps and no big, big wallop. I just steered the ball. This time was a little bit wider and he got it. He got two runs. So he's gone to six. The 50 has been posted. 51 for one. So it had been good going. 50, 29 deliveries and uh, 19 minutes. And again, positive uh, batting by Rebel Benjamin. Lewis in, bowls to Benjamin. Benjamin gets a good delivery. Well bowled. I thought it was well handled too. This one came into the right hander, tall right hander, and uh, just eased onto the back foot and opened the face of the bat and got done to uh, sort of widest third man, short third man, got a single. He's going to be taking strike. He's on seven. And uh, the five deliveries that he has faced, he scored on all of them, hasn't he? Yeah, scored yeah. off. Three yeah. of them? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was cool. Yes, yeah, certainly <laughs> he's, he looks uh, very positive in his batting, you know, uh, he playing sensible shots, uh, uh, two shots played down to uh, backward point. And there was a good delivery by Lewis, uh, last last delivery, and he was on top of it and pushed it slowly on the offside, was able to pick up a single. And you know, all, all it requires really sensible batting. And um, uh, 64 really is, is not uh, a big target. But again, you'd want to make it and, and, and win convincingly. Yeah, I think he might have scored off four deliveries, if I got that right. It might have been one delivery that he didn't score from. So, change of bowling in Jelani George has come in to see whether he can do something substantial. He's going to move from between the umpire and the stumps. Left arm, wrong the wicket, and he's going to bowl to Benjamin, who is seven. 52 for 1. They need 13 of 30 deliveries. Here is George in balls. Driven back to the bowler who picks up. And uh, not quite to the pitch of the ball there, Benjamin. But still didn't try to force the drive. Here once more is George in and balls to Benjamin. Benjamin is coming forward and strokes the ball rather easily. Gets it down to long off. Now I like this. You know, he's keeping his shape picking up ones and twos because he understands there is no pressure and that's why I didn't think that uh, Cato needed to go the, the way he did and that's my that's my disappointment about his batting this morning 53 for one D Daniel McDonald who is 20 just seemed to be out of the play for a while will now come to, come into strike George Ryan John down there long off I'm sure that he'll be a bit disappointed with his, his team's performance as a delivery that is full toss that he hits down to the mid wicket area. They've Ooh. gone for one, won't come back for the second. Lewis sends a strong return. Very good. He's got a good arm. Is Sherman Lewis right into the gloves of the keeper? The batsman crossed for one. We will, sorry, Daniel Benjamin. Sorry, Daniel <laughs> McDonald. He's on 21. And uh, Benjamin, who's taking strike now. Here once more is uh, George in and bowls to Benjamin short outside the Austin onto the back foot, cuts the ball, gets it down to the uh, deep extra cover boundary and uh, they got one ball travelling all along the ground. One more to Benjamin who's gone to nine, it's now 55 for one. Jelani George coming now over the wicket to the left-handed McDonald who turns it nice shot nice shot just behind square we'll get a single that won't come back for the second again Lewis comes into action again he sends he sends a very flat strong return to the keeper good service again they get one McDonald has gone to 22 56 for one brings back uh, Benjamin into strike he's on nine he's played rather sensibly so far here once more is George between the stumps and the umpire. Left arm orthodox outside the arm stump. That's wide. Confirmed by the umpire. One more to extras. 
extras have now gone on to seven and that's wide number six here once more is George to bowl to uh, to bowl to Benjamin who hits that down to Ryan John who feels down there at long on and the batsman they go to for a, a single quite easily too so the over comes to an end at the end of over number six ginger generals they're 58 for one 58 for one seven runs required of 24 yeah and george uh, just going for six runs in in the first over but no uh, no rush i think that benjamin is, is is playing well just picking up the singles uh, t uh j just needing seven runs in, in next in 24 deliveries i think um really they should uh, get to him rather easily and complete what would be a comfortable win yes very much so the tournament this is the final day of uh, this tournament uh, it's been lovely cricket we've had great moments and of course the final coming up a little later on at uh, midday here is going to be Lewis with his second over and he's going to move into bowl to Benjamin. He's there now, bowls to Benjamin, Benjamin gets a short rising delivery that comes into him. He's on to the back foot, jumping in defense, plays it up on the offside and Lewis comes in to pick up. He, he's got such a lovely approach. I think he's got so many things going for him, Rafael, and I'm referring to Lewis. You look at his height, he's good. His body is nicely streamlined his approach to the wicket is also good but that final product of uh, getting line and length right that's the challenge he, he's in now both the benjamin benjamin is beaten by an absolute beauty and even the keeper lawrence didn't buy signal by the umpire no even the keeper didn't <laughs> grasp it didn't pouch it they went to for the single two and also buy signal so the total is now moved on to 59 for one, 59 for one. So six required of 22. Yeah, good delivery from Lewis. This one really uh, cut back in and uh, had some <laughs> some peace. And really Lawrence there uh, was, was beaten. Uh, I think with a piece of it, uh, he was late moving to his left and it just came off his glove. But just to go back to, to Lewis, uh, I think there are two bowlers that really looked uh it seems as though they have everything going in terms of uh the approach the wicket as lewis and and redhead uh, come back here is uh lewis in now and bolts to mcdonald mcdonald gets a, a good delivery just outside the off stump slanting across his body this time lauren goes across and collects behind the stumps total remains on 59 for one yes yeah, Rafael. Uh, just get the impression uh, lewis just i think he just need to maybe settle down and, and really concentrate if you look at him go back to his mark uh that have happened you know consistently throughout the tournament that he reaches mark and turn and just runs. so you get the impression sometimes he runs from uh, from from anywhere and that contributes to the, the amount of no balls that he bowled he's in now and bowls bowl him mcdonald bowl it was pitched up and looking to swing that through the leg side missed everything the bales have been dislodged and uh, well in fact seem to have gotten an inside edge and uh, so mcdonald goes he was so happy elated by that wicket uh sherman lewis deserved it too he is gone bowled by lewis for 22 and ginger generals they've lost the second wicket is 59 for two yeah i sure that was unnecessary again we've seen batsmen looking to, to swing across the line a ball out, uh, outside the off some just just leaving the left hander and he was trying to swing this one somewhere over long on and taking the inside edge and coming back on the stumps and, and maybe that's one of the the weak areas in 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 tom in with some of the batsmen in that they probably just need to play a lot straighter than and looking to to swing from outside the off some hit across the line number of, of batsmen who are bold uh swinging across the line but you know, if they would have looked to play a lot straighter, uh, I think, you know, it would really benefit them uh, quite, a, quite a lot more. Kian George replacing Daniel McDonald, left handed batsman, as uh, it's going to be once more Lewis.
got two for seven in his bowling spell so far. He's bowled okay. But I think overall in the tournament he must be disappointed with his performance. Moves in to bowl to George. He's there now. Bowls. George is beaten by an absolute beauty. Now if if Lewis could be bowling like that, how he has bowled this morning, then you know you could say that's the good old fashioned Lewis. But uh, as I said, his the tournament was not a very good tournament for him at all. Well, it speaks his his discipline. Uh, we know that he has the ability. He would have played at the highest level, uh, and one expected that you know you'd come here, we would see him. Um, maybe not every day would be a good day for you, but you you would you would see him bowl well. Moves into bowl to Kian George. George comes forward, taps it out on the offside, and I think he chose his man well as to <laughs> whether he should have gone for the single, and uh, got it quite comfortably in the end. So that completes the over, the over, uh, over number seven, three overs to go, and Ginger Generals. Well, they got five required of eighteen balls. Yes, and just go, just to go back to Shaman Lewis because he's such a talent. Uh, as as we said before, there everything there for him in terms of you yeah, look at his movements, uh, how he gets to the crease. You know, seem to be in total control. But I think his discipline just need to be more disciplined. Focus on his game. Focus on what he's going to do. You need to focus on each delivery at your bowl, where you'd want to bowl it. And uh, we haven't been seeing that. So one hope really going forward that, you know, he's going to get back to where he was, spend some time training, focus, and, and probably get back to where he was. Yes, yeah, so and that, that to me is all important. You know, life is about discipline. And if, if you're going to be consistent and you're going to, uh, excel in whatever you do in life it means that you can't you got to be you got to stick to the rules you got to be disciplined you got to be focused and all the great people in the world not just in the p sporting field but all the great people in the world who've made tremendous coverage and distances in their lives and who had great accomplishments they've been known to be disciplined discipline about their trade discipline about whatever activities they're involved in, especially if it involves the career, you've got to be disciplined. And then you'll have success stories. George is going to be taking up and round. John will be bowling from the northern Odabo end. Will this be the last over? We'll have to see. Here is George facing up now to John. To this delivery, he is stroking the ball. Oh, bad miss. Down to the backward point area. That's going to go into the boundary for four. Well, the fielder didn't go down there to really stop it. He just stayed oh, easily. He really didn't bend down as he should. Went in a rather lazy manner. So, the yeah. scores are now level. Yeah, level 64 for two. Yeah. So, yeah, bad miss there by the backward point feeler. That uh, went straight to him as yeah. he went on casually. John is in now and bowls to George. Gets away with delivery. Wide signal by the umpire. And uh, 65. So the target has just been reached. And uh, the match is over. <laughs> Some of the players are just, they're, they're just meandering around as if to say, Oh, is it complete? Yes, it is. So the generals they've won this game um, in a rather anticlimactic manner as uh, John bowled a short uh, delivery that was way over the batsman head confirmed as a wide and so the players will go in a fraternal spirit just to do the usual thing in terms of post-match just shaking hands and uh, maybe uh, saying a few affable words to one another. So Ginger Generals, they've won by eight wickets. They've won by eight wickets. They played a better cricket today. Yeah, comfortable win by Ginger Generals. 65 for two. But Safran Strikers uh, will be very disappointed. I, I think that they were disappointed uh, yesterday in the semi finals and, and I seem to, uh, to take it into this game. Uh, they didn't bat well. Uh, they only got to 64. Uh, none of the batsmen were able to get off to uh, any score. And uh, the Ginger Generals uh, really uh, batted well under no pressure. 
was able to get 65 for two rather easily uh, winning this uh, third place playoff by eight wickets. Yes, so they've won by eight wickets. Ginger Generals defeating the uh, Saffron Strikers. Well, let's just quickly go through the scorecard. It's not a whole lot to say, I must admit. Roland Cato was caught. Uh, Joseph, Mikel Joseph of the Bowling of Lewis went for 19, 12 balls, two fours and a six. Daniel McDonald was rather enterprising, particularly earlier in his innings. He was uh, bowled by Lewis, played on. 22 uh, spent 28 minutes of the crease 17 balls one four and two sixes Benjamin played a nice little innings here uh, not out 10 of 11 balls but he didn't have to do anything rather extravagant Kieran George not out five and uh, the ginger generals reaching the target 65 for two 65 for two and uh, uh, look at the bowling well, Kemp Charles, who opened the attack, none for 11 of two. Laurie Williams, one for 17, rather expensive, one over for 17. Jensen Phillip had uh, none for 16 of one. Sherman Lewis, the only success story there for uh, the uh, Saffron Strikers, uh, two for eight of two overs. Jelani George had none for six of one. And Ran John, just a one ball that he bowled there. And, uh, of course, um, it went for the wide. So that's the situation there, Ginger General. They are 60, they were 65 for two at the close. They've won the game and won rather convincingly by eight wickets. So that was for the third place playoff, uh, the match between Saffron Strikers and Ginger General. And coming up in just exactly one hour's time, Nutmeg Warriors will be coming up against the Cinnamon Pacers in just about one hour's time. We're going to be here, of course, to bring you the broadcast. And this is the final day of Dream 11 Spice Isle 1010 Cricket. We'll be right back. <laughs> 